Let's walk through some of that polling that Joe was talking about a minute ago. In the newest Monmouth University national poll, Joe Biden now holds an 11-point lead over President Trump, 52 percent to 41 percent. Vice President Biden continues to do well among key voting groups, including voters 65 and older and women. The president leads among voters 50 to 64 years old, as well as with white voters without a college degree. Joe Biden also leads President Trump in the key battleground states of Wisconsin, Ohio and Arizona, all states the president won in 2016. According to new polls from Fox News, Biden is up nine points in Wisconsin, 49 to 40 in Ohio. Biden narrowly leads by two points, 45 to 43. That's within the margin of error. They are tied there. And in Arizona, a similar story where Biden is up four points, 46 to 42. In that state's Senate race, Democrat Mark Kelly is now leading Republican incumbent Senator Martha McSally, 50 to 37, a 13 point spread, according to Fox News. Things also getting close in Texas, according to the latest Quinnipiac poll. Only one point separates the contenders. Donald Trump up 44 percent, Joe Biden at 43. They are tied right now in the state of Texas. You'll remember that Donald Trump won Texas in 2016 by 10 points. And this, Joe, this spate of polls that we just walked through combined with others is why you're seeing all these reports of people being very concerned while they look at the map around President Trump. Well, well, they have a reason to be concerned. <clears throat> Willie, I, it, it, it's very interesting that uh, Richard uh, Haas, uh, early uh, in this pandemic, uh, uh, had a great insight. And the insight was that the pandemic is not going to change history. It's going to accelerate history. Uh, people who, mm -hmm. who, who have studied polls and politics for years have said rightly that three states in the Sun Belt were going to shift and become more blue over time, and they were going to go from reliably red states to purple states to blue states. Those three states, Georgia, Texas, and Arizona. Now, none of us three, four months ago actually thought that those three states were, were possibilities for a Democratic pickup. But you look at the pandemic, you look at the protests, you look at the economic uh, problems, and, and we're starting to see fault lines already in 2020 instead of 2024, when, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm expecting in 2024 that those states are going to be like Virginia uh, and are going to at least be purple as we go into a 2024 race just because of demographics in Texas, just because of demographics in Arizona especially. But we're having an acceleration of this political process. You're now seeing Donald Trump, instead of uh, fighting in Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania and Florida, and assuming that Florida is going to be an easier win for him, which many Republicans expected. Uh, now uh, he's losing in those states. By most most polls show him, the, this Fox News poll shows him losing by nine in Wisconsin. I personally think that's outside, uh, a little bit outside of, of, of uh, an outside, an outlier. Uh, but you look at Wisconsin, you look at Michigan, you look at Pennsylvania, you look at Florida. I think most people right now would put all of those states lean Democrat based on based on the polls. And suddenly we're, we're talking about Georgia, uh, which you know, is, is basically a draw, uh, according to some recent polls. Texas, which we now, I think, have had three polls in the last month that show that state to be in the margin of error. And then you've got Arizona. Uh, same thing happening there, Willie, where Donald Trump is now down four points in this Fox News poll. Uh, he's down in most Florida polls that you see. Uh, and so he's starting to really bleed support in the solid South, in the solid Sun Belt. Uh, and there are so many reasons for this. We've been talking about it over the past couple of weeks. But if you're the Trump campaign, you, you can't you can't try to expand the map. Uh, as I think John Heilman said a couple of weeks ago, uh, they were placing ads in Iowa. They were placing ads uh, in uh, the panhandle of Florida. Uh, and, and so that's what, the, at least at the beginning of June, instead of looking to expand the map, 
They're just trying to hold on to Georgia, Texas, Arizona, Florida, states that should comfortably be in Donald Trump's margin uh, uh, column right now. Yeah, and obviously we'll remind people that President Trump doesn't have much of a margin of error to work with. He, of course, lost the popular vote in 2016, won by a handful of votes in Michigan, a handful of votes in Wisconsin. He had no margin of error to work with there if he wants to be reelected. And now, as you say, he's having to not only win those states, but cover his flank in places he thought he could chalk up, like Georgia and Texas and Arizona. Michael Steele, if you are in your old job, you can put that hat on for a moment, running the Republican National Committee. What would you think as you look at this map right now? What would you think as you look at these polls, not just for President Trump, but for incumbent Senate candidates like Martha McSally and Cory Gardner? Yeah, I'd be, I'd be really concerned about my down ballot. Uh, I'd be very concerned about, uh, you know, governor's races. I'd be concerned about state legislative races. Um, if you have the kind of surge um, from the grassroots uh, across the country, uh, particularly among de independent center right, center left individuals, um, that now begins to have an impact on what your state legislative uh, campaigns uh, will run into. That particular buzzsaw could be very damaging. It's one of the one of the um, the silent weapons that we used in 2010 was focusing on those state legislative races. We were looking at a an energy push from the bottom up uh, to sort of help us uh, win governorships and 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 things like that. You now have the problem where you've got at the top of the ticket that could actually be a drag on those races that are on the margins where. You know, you're holding the state legislature by three seats or you have the potential to pick up the state legislature by six seats. Now those races take on a whole different complexion. So the, the party uh, is going to be coordinating as closely as it can with the uh, the uh, campaigns at the grassroots level, governor's races, uh, town executive races and the like to try to hold on to some of those seats. All right. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.